Welcome back to Grand Slam Sports Baseball, and the season is finally over. It is. My name is Charles Foster, and I'm joined here with... Jay Sodge. And the World Series, I mean, do I, I am the, I am so happy right now. If you are, you know, Arlington, Texas, it's been 59 years. They have been looking for it forever. I remember watching a dad the other day crying, watching that video. Cried more than his own daughter's birth, they said. This is a, this is a big moment for sports. How, how, do, how are you feeling after this? After the Rangers I, won I, it all? I, I don't know how to feel because my picks were wrong along the way. <laughs> it kind of pained me a little bit, but I mean, it's, they deserve this. Yes. They 100% deserve this. I, I, I believe they were the, the, the longest tenured team that hadn't won it yet? Yes, the longest team to not have won one. I believe, I believe San Diego is next in line now. San Diego Padres. and Brewers are tied yeah. at 54, 55. Yeah. yeah. So they, this city deserves this. Texas deserves this. I am 100% believe they were the best team over the course of the playoffs. So they 100%. Undefeated on the road. Undefeated. I mean, they didn't lose the game. That's, that's, that's crazy to me. How do you not lose a game on the road? I mean, their, their motto coming into the season, come in and take it, and that's exactly what they did. they did. This is the definition of a complete team. They had great hitting. They had great pitching. They still didn't even have their ace for the entire year of Jacob deGrom. I mean, it's when this, you get an A-plus on a project you didn't even do. Exactly. This <laughs> team right here is the definition of perfection. Yes. And unfortunately, I mean, I was, I was team Braves going throughout the entire year. But I mean, the Braves, I mean, they showed it sometimes, you know, too much talent. It doesn't really matter that much if you cannot beat teams like the Phillies. The, the D-backs just looked outmatched. And they were they outmatched. They were outmatched. That, that was the consensus coming into the series. The D-backs are outmatched for most of the, the playoffs. They were 84 and 78 for a reason. Yeah. Coming in, this was the team to beat. This was I said they were going to win it earlier in the year. I should have stuck with my pick. A lot of people were saying that, oh, you never said that. Well, yeah, Jacob deGrom was on this team. So, yeah, I was riding the hype train pretty hard. Unfortunately, I changed my pick. I would have looked really smart if I didn't. But um, this team, Arlington can be happy. Both sides of Texas are now happy. Obviously, Houston won it last year. Big now that, you know, 59 years in the making, man. Yeah, they're not a football state anymore. They're a baseball state now. Surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> Just look at them go. I want, I want to kind of like look into some of the teams. Which team do you think will get one that hasn't got one in a while? I'm going to name off four teams okay. that I know have not got one in a while. We, of course, have the longest since winning one, the Guardians, with I want to say almost 69, 70 years mm -hmm. by now. I know we have the Padres and the Brewers between 55 on both of them. And then the Rays, they're, they're at 20, but they've still never won one before. Which of those four teams do you think is going to take one home first? San Diego. Think San Diego? I think I'm maybe gonna, even next year. I, th I think I'm gonna go with San Diego as well. I think that that team is they're, they're the most. Set. They they have a small window of the next two or three seasons to yeah. possibly win it. If they don't win it, then then it's gonna be another 10, 15 years. It depends though, because we're going through another Juan Soto fiasco where he's looking like he's gonna be a Yankee with by either the end of the year or midway through Come next on. year. Come here, buddy. So um, I mean, we'll get into that in a little bit, but you know, free agency's coming right hand. We've already talked about some of our free agent picks from the league. But let's look at something that wasn't really popular until, you know, the Shohei Otani era. International free agents. First one that I got here is Yoshinobu Yamanato. He has obviously been... Mouthful. <laughs> he's been one of the best pitchers. He has won the Japanese version of the Cy Young Award three years going. He is currently in the Japanese playoffs right now, where he is... I'm pretty sure he pitched last night. I do not know how well he did. I never got a look at it. But um, he's been the big name. He's the next, the next Shohei, the next Kodai Senga. Dodger. You think he's a Dodger? Think it's set in stone, pretty much. It's got to be. You think, right? Yeah. I mean, most of these people I'm going to be naming off internationally. Most of them have already been in talks with a lot of the other, with a lot of other teams. The big teams, especially. Um, some of these did surprise. The Dodgers definitely surprised me. They're not a team that like normally goes international to find their players. A lot of their players are American. So it was definitely or or Hispanic. So for them to go down to Asia was definitely not something that was on my. Um, my bingo card for FA, for free agency this year. Yeah. Looking in at another pick, of course, we have Shota Imanaga. He is, of course, another big pick. We don't really know much about him. He's currently ineligible to become a free agent, but he's being listed. So there's a possibility, so we're going to talk about it. He, one of the best lefties coming into free agency, which is rare. You do not get a lot of good lefties. Yeah. He played with the Japan, Japan in the World Baseball Classic, played great. Do you, do you have a team that you think he's going to go to? He's a Red Sox. I think he's a Red Sox? We know the Red Sox, they have always had a good international yeah. staff. Their international signings are always good. Masataka Yoshida um, coming into this offseason. 
Um, they, they, they really like to find players and get them from internationally. So I, I really think that this, that would be a good fit for him. They, they have a team full of lefties. They have Chris Sale, who they're going to have for another year. Having him alongside that, and I still think that they are the favorite for Julio Arias, who we're going to go over in a little bit. I think that the, having three lefties, that's going to be something that, you know, that's going to be what I call a Yankees killer. I mean, that, that, that right there is a big way to stick it to your rivals. I mean, the, Yankees, do that, man. the Yankees are a team that they hit very well against righties, but lefties, you know, eh, it's a kind of a toss-up. Yeah. So going into a team like that against three lefties, if you have a four-game series, you're going against lefties three of the four games most likely. Yankees are getting swept or something. That's a problem. <laughs> so I think that Red Sox, I think they're going to go for the Yankees killer lineup. Agreed. Last, last person I'm going to talk about, this is a Cuban, Yerio Rodriguez. Personally... This one's kind of more of a this one's been more of a surprise pick. His name's been floating around my White Sox lately, mostly because his agent is the same one as Cespedes, who is in a Triple A, and then of course Luis Robert Jr. We have been seeing him a lot. You know, he's been kind of looking like he's going to be going to the league. He's also ineligible mm -hmm. right now, but same situation as Shota. Played in Japan. He's from Cuba. Same agent as the two White Sox Cubans that came in. Do you think that the White Sox is a place for him, or do you think he goes to a more of a contender? If so, what team? I could see the White Sox for sure, because like what you mentioned with the agents, mm -hmm. it's definitely plausible, but there you're going to have your Dodgers, you're yeah. going to have your Yankees, you're going to have those big teams trying to go for you know an international name. I I'm interested to see the Astros, how they play for him. No, D Dusty Baker was very big um, in the um, – he was big in the Spanish scene, but with him retiring, um, is it – are they going to, you know, keep on going after those international prospects? Are they kind of, kind of take a step back and let's be less ambitious? Um, I think that the White Sox, you know, this is a team that, you know, it's the South Side of Chicago. It's a very Hispanic area, and playing with people that he's played with on the World Baseball Classic, of course, Luis Robert, Yoan Mancada, um, Cespedes, all of them on the Cuban national team. It would just be like playing in another team that he's already played in this whole time. I think it would be a good fit, especially for a team that needs yeah. pitching. One hundred percent. Looking down at pitching, once again, if you need an ace, now is the time. Because look at this list of pitchers, this free agency. Mm. This entire top list, well, minus Noah Syndergaard. That's, if we put Blake Snell up in this top row, all of these guys could ace your team. Shohei Otani, I think he's going to stay an angel this year. I just don't see him leaving with Mike Trout staying. Okay. But you have Aaron Nola, Ar Urias, if he gets past his charges. Clayton Kershaw, Blake Snell down there who sh probably should be Cy Young and still might be Cy Young winner. Who do you think here, who do you think is going to move? What are some people that you see here? I mean, <clears throat> like you said, if, you, if Urias gets past charges, one of these Dodgers yeah. is going to go somewhere else. Maybe center guard. I could see him leaving. I mean, the Do I mean, Padres have Snell and Darvish. I think they both stay if yes. the Padres can dish out enough money for it. I think that, that I don't think they're going to be able to keep I think Darvish might dip because yeah. he, he was getting paid 20 mil. I don't see him taking that much yeah. of a dip. I'm not sure about Montage with the Yankees. I'm not sure if he'll stay. Hopefully Severino stays. I like Severino. He, he did was, have a really off season. Though. He did have an off season, but I still believe in him to be really good. Jordan Montgomery, also a previous Yankee, played well for the Cardinals. He could be a really good starting pitcher if he goes he anywhere just, else. He just won a World Series. That picture is off. I do not know why he has a Cardinals hat on, but that, that he just won a World Series. I mean, yeah, yeah he's, he's going to bring that lefty. And this is, this is the weird part, because I remember last year we came in, and the big thing was bats. Like, yeah. we had Aaron Judge, Dansby Swanson, Xander Bogart, some of the best bats in all of baseball. And now we have some of the best pitchers, and not just pitchers, lefties. This is a rare commodity yeah. in baseball. Nola's going to stay, I believe. I think Nola will leave. You think so? I think he's going to St. Louis, that's my prediction. I think St. Louis could use him. They'd shell out okay. money for him. Kershaw's going to stay. He's I, yeah, sure. a Dodger yeah. for life. Come on. Dodger for life. Uh, Sonny Gray, I mean, he, I could see him leaving the Twins for sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think? He's about 33 years old, I want to say, 32. Um, he had one of the, his best seasons of his career. I think he was the ERA leader for most of the year. I think he lost it towards the end. Um, I think that a team that needs consistency, I can't really think of one off the top of my head, but like a mediocre team or maybe like a back-end pitcher for a top team. I mean, you look up here, you see a lot of similar hats. Yes. Dodgers, three of them. Padres, two. Yankees, two. Cardinals, two. Well, I mean, Montgomery was the card. Rangers, Rangers too. too. There yeah. you go. Twins, too. <laughs> it's definitely. How does that affect a team losing possibly two or three pitchers? If you're on the Dodgers scenario, you better figure something out because <laughs> this this could be a problem. Because you know, Syndergaard, you know, he's I don't even I think he actually left the Dodgers coming into this year. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, yeah. he did. He finished off with um, 
the Guardians, and I'm pretty sure he got dropped. So I don't even, he's not a Dodger. I know that for a fact. He got okay. traded at the deadline. Um, this picture must be from the beginning of the year. My fault. <laughs> um, Clayton Kershaw, I don't think they need to worry too much about him leaving. He's been on the Dodgers since like 02, 03. Um, Urias, he's the main problem leaving. But I mean, at that point with the Chargers right now, I think they're just okay with just getting him out of there. What's your thoughts dealing with on it. the White Sox? Uh, Giolito, of course, he just finished. Um, he, once again, another unupdated picture. He just, he was also traded at the deadline for, um, I want to say he went with the Angels. I think he finished the season with the Guardians. I think he was a part of their um, drop. Giolito, I think he goes somewhere. I do not know where yet. I think it'll be a small market team that needs a pitcher. Maybe like, I don't know, like a Royals. Like a team that like really needs an ace. This is what, that's what I've been talking about. Is that this right here is the best time for you to find an ace. Now the Orioles, I mean not the Orioles, the Royals have kind of looked like, oh, they like Cole Reagans. They really like Brady Singer. But I mean, you could have someone here, a veteran that you don't normally get very often mm -hmm. in free agency. You do not get a veteran that's willing to go to a bad team. So. I think it would be a good pickup for Giolito to You're go. You're talking to about some of these teams, throwing you know, some teams out here for the, that could get some of these names. What's the main team that should try to go out and get a number one in your, in your, in your belief? Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore was a team that was contender. We said it a few weeks ago that this team would not be able to go anywhere because they don't have pitching. And exactly like I said, they went nowhere. They didn't even win a game. So in that situation, you simply just need an ace. They I mean, don't have They one. lost to the World Series champ. Yeah. But, I mean. <laughs> um, Urias, if they can somehow get him. Urias. Um, Nola could. No, I think Nola's kind of past his acing days, but he'd be better than whatever they got going on down there. Um, Blake Snell, he's definitely one of the, he's in fact, in my opinion, is the best, one of the best pure aces on this you list. You can't even include Shohei in this because he can't pitch. Yeah. Next Shohei can't even pitch, <laughs> exactly. So Blake Snell <laughs> is the best ace on this list. So Blake Snell, if you were the Orioles, pay the man. But also you got to be careful because if you pay too much and you're going to lose the Adleys, the Gunners. market team. Those small markets, man. It's tough. It's especially tough. in leagues like the MLB and NBA where it's different than the NFL and how the cap works. Yeah. Because in the MLB and the NBA, it favors the bigger market teams mm -hmm. more than does the NFL. So that's why the small market teams have to be careful with how much money they throw out there. Your window is very short, especially um, you know even if you have if you're in the Oreo shoe, shoes where you know their window would technically be long, but they got to pay all those people. So you got to be careful with what you sign. Don't get too ambitious. Um, looking on to, I think this is kind of like the biggest talk in a lot of sports every single year. New York. You always got to talk about the New York teams. I mean, New York has not been the best place for sports lately. Um, New York is known for their success and known for the rings, their championships, mm -hmm. and they've just not been getting them lately. What is next for both not only the Yankees, but also the Mets? Like, what do you, what do, you do in this situation? I mean, with the Yankees, obviously you have Judge locked down for the next few seasons. Yeah, the next almost decade. Stanton should be a goner, Probably. in my opinion. Stanton does not fit the team the way me and the rest of the fans envisioned him to fit along with this squad. The Yankees, they, have, they still have a decent squad, but they need to make some big moves, some splash moves in free agency to get back to the pinnacle of yes. baseball. The Mets, I don't know where they can go. They keep buying these top-tier talents, and they just consistently struggle to be a playoff team. They finally threw in the hat, though. I think that that's Yeah, that's true. They we, 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 talk, we talk about it in the NFL segment today when yeah. we were recording that. And the issue was with some teams, like the Bears, they don't know how to throw in the hat. Um, the Mets... That was one of my fears, is that they're just going to sit there with their massive payroll and just not. But they got rid of Scherzer, they got rid of Verlander, probably going to lose Alonzo coming this offseason. Um, it's just time to reset. They need to just rebuild, take a year or two of just... Maybe three, maybe even four. Maybe, <laughs> just, you know, not being as good as you want to be, you know, yeah. as a New York team. But build up that farm system. Yeah. Get something positive going like the Orioles did. And, you know, with being a big market team like the Mets... That could be just like that. Yeah, if you, if, you get, if you get something going, people are going to want to play for you. If I was a baseball yeah. player, I'd love to play for the Mets. I mean, New York, Big Apple, I mean, that's what you want to be. Okay, yeah. and, you know, you're going to play with some of the best, like Francisco Lindor, one of my favorite shortstops. In fact, he is my favorite shortstop. Um, Pete Alonso, when he's there, he's a great player. I'm just not sure where the Yankees can go. I mean, they're consistently decent, but they're never at that great level. The Yankees, number one, need to free up some cap space, get yeah. rid of Giancarlo Stanton. He's yes, getting paid almost agree. as much as Judge was to hit one, I think he hit 194, mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, that's, that's atrocious. No matter how hard he hits the ball, he's got to hit the ball to do it. And um, an outfield. I feel like that was the issue is, you know, you have Judge in the right field. At center field, they got rid of Bader. 
they and Isaiah kind of left for playing left field most of the year. That's a problem because he's an infielder. He plays everything. It's he can play third base. Uh, short, he, he, he even had him, I think, at pitcher at one game one time. Like they, he pitched a few innings, and the, he he plays catcher as well. I know he also has that in his. You know, this is a team like they have like Rizzo. I I don't remember who. I don't know if Golden Gloves come out yet, but he's Golden Glove contender. You have um, that short, Volpe looks great. Like you have him. Judge, looks great. Yep. Glaber, Glaber's great. Higashioka, it's a great and catcher. And you started pitching with Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, who's probably going to win Cy Young. And, I mean, and, and what's his name? The other starter, the other starter pitcher. Uh, Nestor Cortez. Nestor Cor no, uh, yeah, and someone else's. Carlos well. Rodon. Rodon, yeah, Rodon, Rodon. I, 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 I'm a little bit salty about Rodon leaving the, um, leaving the White Sox, but um, he was atrocious in a Yankees uniform. So if they can get him back, with, and hopefully he uses that $36 million a year they're paying him. Hopefully. He can be a great pitcher for this team. This team has the pieces. They just need to build around. They cannot put all their money in four or five places. You cannot have IKF playing left field. And I, I think I don't even know who their center field was to end off the year because don't ask me because I stopped watching because I just I couldn't care anymore because they were just consistently struggling in every single game. I want to say it was like oh, I can't remember his name. It was like Estevan Floriel or something and like actually, that. Actually, I think you're right. <laughs> and he he. Obviously, that's not a Yankee center fielder. So make make a move. This team's fine. They have money. They have prestige. They have the state. They have the weather. They'll be fine. It's just both both of these teams will be fine. It's just, Mets are going to take a little bit longer than the Yankees are for uh, sure. Absolutely agree. But it's it's the time of rebuilding. I mean, I it's my favorite part of all baseball season. Baseball season's over. It's going to be a really lonely 120 some days until we get some good baseball. At least it's shorter than most sports. Like look at the NFL. Yeah. It's like 200 something days. Yeah, it's, we get we forever. we get some some spring stuff going on coming soon. But that's going to be all for MLB for a little bit. Not yeah. just not just this episode. It might be a few we'll weeks. We'll get free agency when it starts. Once out. free agency comes back, we'll be back. But that's going to be all from MLB from us. My name is Charles Foster. Jay Saj. Have a good night.